wanted to put together a video showing how easy it is to be able to do the routing for your MPC um, VST um, software into Logic Pro X. Now I've watched a, quite a few videos and man, I see people doing some really complicated stuff. They're bouncing all the tracks out of their MPC software and then bringing the audio data back in. It's like, really? That is a lot of work, man. I am not, I don't really have a lot of time or I don't, my patience lessens my willing to be able to do that kind of stuff, especially if I'm trying to be creative and I don't have time for all that. All I want to do is open my VST, program my beats, and you know, be done with it. Um, and pretty much you can do that um, and not really worry about a lot of stuff. Um, and I found that it's actually pretty easy to do it in Logic um, versus some of the other programs. Some of the other programs I tend to have to really try to figure out how to get the uh, audio or not necessarily the audio output it because what you're dealing with when you're doing this is MIDI data. MIDI data doesn't have sound. Um, it's the, 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 the sound that you're using on top of the data that triggers it or the, the audio that <laughs> your MIDI data is what triggers the audio is what I'm trying to say. Okay. So, uh, I just opened up this little track and this is like the very first track I've ever created in logic. Um, so I've been really just, uh, trying to wrap my mind around how, um, to use logic more efficiently or actually just trying to use logic period. Cause I'm new to it. But, um, in any DAW, my very first thing that I have to do, uh, learn how to do is how to deal with my MPC in that DAW. So what I did, um, for this track, um, is when you first open up the MPC, uh, the MPC VST, make sure that when you open it, um, that you select, um, the multi out output mode when you drag it in or where you open it. Um, and here I'll just, I'll just delete this track and we'll just start fresh and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. The MPC software is completely out of the play, out of the uh, track altogether. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to create a instrument track or in logic, it's called a software instrument track. Um, and that's my software instrument track. I'm going to make it track number one. Um, okay. So when you do that, um, if you open up, uh, this side panel, um, it's the inspector. The inspector allows you to be able to control the input outputs, your sins, your audio effects, um, all of that within logic. And this is where I, you, uh, select where, what plugin that you want to use. So for me, I want to go to MPC and then I'm going to select the multi output 16 by stereo. And when you do that, it's, uh, plugins, um, software panel. And in here, I'm just going to open up the, the project that I was previously working on. And you may want to get into a habit of naming all your projects just in case, you know, something happens. Um, the, the MPC so software does have like kind of a failover kind of, uh, mechanism where it saves the last loaded project. So you could sometimes figure out what you're working on that way. And it gives them this, these weird, really weird names, like the MPC state. Um, so you may be able to backtrack into, um, the project that you're working on if you forget to do it. Um, okay. So now I just opened up the, the track that I was working on or the, the, the beat that I was working on in here. And I'm going to close that out for a second. But also when you do that in the, um, in logic, it opens up these little parameters down here at the bottom of the volume control. So if you see these two little buttons, the less, the plus and minus buttons, those actually serve a purpose. So what they are is they're the auxiliary track, uh, parameter channels. So if I click on this, it will create an auxiliary channel 
um, for this one, uh, this one um, software channel. So now I can assign my pads to either, you know, channel three and four, five and six, seven, eight, whatever. So now I don't have to worry about um, having all of my drum tracks on a single channel for my MPC. So you can pretty much add effects, you know, do the normal stuff that you want to do with your drums inside of Logic without brain damage. So I didn't have to bounce anything out. Um, but the other thing that I that you do want to do is, um, and this is what I like to do is I, I use the the pad mixer to be able to uh, assign my um, my uh, outputs because it's just a little bit easier. And I like to do it from the actual device itself. From the device, you click on the menu. And then from the menu, there's a, I mean, the pad mixer is there and you just click on route here. You can define what pad is on what channel. Um, some people don't like using channel one and two. They'll use uh, alternate channels, but I like using one and two for like kicks. I, I'm, I, I like using all of my channels. I don't, you know, so right now, um, I have. Uh, that solid kick on one and two and then I have my snare on three and four So any snares that I want to be on that um, That channel I, you change to three and four and then my hats are on five and six So I have all my hats on five and six And that's pretty much it so basically if you if you're like an MPC uh, uh, live user and you know you you it's a remote device basically you you're um, not having to be tethered to the computer anymore so you take your machine out you program all of your tracks in it and you come back to the um, come back plug everything back in it's gonna connect to um, the VST software um, you open up the project that you were working in and then you just track everything out this way why would you want to bounce down um, all of the stuff from within the the device, it's just, it's crazy to me. Um, when it, when you could just easily do it this way, um, without the brain damage and not having to constantly be worried about bouncing stuff out, it's just much easier. Um, and thank goodness the, uh, developers, um, saw that there, there was a need for this because without this ability to be able to, uh, make those auxiliary channels, it, it would be impossible. That bouncing out would be like something that you would definitely have to do. And I'm just gonna play this to show you that it does work. So these are my mixed channels. So again, my snare is on three and four. My hi-hats are on five and six. Kick is on one and two. Well, I'm hoping, hoping that this helps somebody um, not have brain damage um, because I, I don't like complicated things. And when I see people doing complicated stuff, it really bothers me. <laughs> and that's why I created this video um, because I know there are a lot of people out there that use MPC, but guys, you're bouncing down stuff when you don't really have to. I don't know why you would want to do that. Uh, I guess I could see some benefit, like if you're actually trying to import it into a DAW that didn't have, uh, where you didn't have the MPC VST, I guess there would be a benefit for that because you could, then you could just use the audio and, um, you know, resync everything back up uh, that way. But when you have the VST, um, you don't need to do that. You just, it integrates easily with a DAW and you just assign the, uh, auxiliary channels out and you're done. Well, uh, I hope this was useful. Uh, please like and subscribe. I'm constantly uh, coming up with new ideas for content, I'm trying to grow from a musical perspective and a technical perspective in music as well, because <laughs> it seems to be a little bit more technical nowadays, um, especially with this kind of stuff. Um, but this is easy. Um...
See you later, guys.